All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. That's the sign over there you'll see in a second. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I'll be filling in for Tucker. Meanwhile, it's been more than a year since Hillary Clinton's 2016 defeat, but the excuses just keep on coming. Clinton appeared on UU, its radio show, today to talk about her book, What Happened. I know, she's on a book tour, I had no idea. And she had a whole array of explanations for her loss. But this time, she put the blame on a new person, President Obama. When you run to succeed a two-term president of your own party, you have a historical headwind uh, blowing against you. It is a challenge if you are both the candidate defending a lot of the uh, areas of agreement, but also putting forth uh, an agenda for change, which is what I tried to do. It is often difficult to get the second part of that message through. Right, because you didn't say anything different from President Obama, so how do you run on the word change? Now, today wasn't the first time Clinton pointed figures. If you had an email for every excuse she had, you could fill an entire private server. The use of uh, my email account was uh, turned into, you know, the biggest scandal since Lord knows when. They covered it like it was Pearl Harbor. If you look at Facebook, uh, the vast majority of the news, news items posted were fake. There's all these stories about, you know, guys over in Macedonia who are running these fake news sites. I inherit nothing from the Democratic Party. Well, Comey was more than happy to talk about my emails, but he wouldn't talk about investigation of the Russians. I also think I was the victim of a very broad assumption I was going to win. I did not know she was a judge on The Voice. I don't know if that chair turns. Meanwhile, Clinton used today's appearance to discuss more than just her defeat. She also said America has a large number of white supremacists who have made common cause with the president. I think there has proven to be um, more white supremacists and white nationalists uh, than I wish there were uh, in our country, as we saw tragically in Charlottesville and other places. And they have made common cause uh, with uh, the president's agenda um, out of their own mouth that he is someone that they uh, are counting on to promote it. Well, Clinton also expressed doubts about whether she can ever possibly be friendly towards President Trump like she was in the past. I said we all need to give him a chance and we all need to uh, support our president. We have one president at a time. And uh, I've been uh, very disappointed in uh, the way that he has conducted himself. After this is all done, do you see becoming friendly with him again? I don't know the answer to that question, Hugh. I do. I'm going to go with no. Uh, Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent and an NYPD officer, and may I add, editorializing, a very nice man. Robin Biro is a former Obama campaign regional director, and they both join us now. Robin, the problem was uh, President Obama. President Obama uh, replacing a third-term popular president who got over 50 percent when he left. That is very hard when you run as an agent of change. Do you buy that? You know, I can't ignore that these good things do go in waves. I mean, it happened with George W. Bush. We, after eight years of George W. Bush, uh, I thought we were destined for a change. And I thought that she had quite the road ahead of her uh, with trying to paint herself differently than President Obama. And really, she did not do a very good job of that. Uh, she did the the best I think that she could, but her campaign still, I, I still insist to this day that it lacked soul. I had the privilege of meeting her several times face to face. She was always warm and ingratiating, yeah. but once you got her in front of her camera, it just fell flat and she never seemed to really resonate with the people. Uh, and it just was lacking that soul. She failed to tap into that wave of populism and the anger. Uh, and Donald Trump did capture that. And so did Bernie Sanders. Right. Uh, Bernie was authentic. I would say George Bush was authentic, and I think President Obama was charismatic. Even one-on-one -on -one interviews, Dan, she didn't seem to resonate. But the problem fundamentally, I think, you tell me if I'm wrong, is if you're going to run as agent of change, you have to say something different from the person that you're changing from. She ran oh, that, the same thing that President Obama ran on. She never said he was wrong here, he was wrong there, he was wrong there, and I'll be different here, right? Well, yes, Brian, that's because she sat in front of focus groups and changed their position by the day. You know, she'd lick her finger and see where the wind was blowing. You know, Robin said he had the privilege of meeting her. Well, I had the privilege of working with and for her as a Secret Service agent. My takeaway was the exact opposite. 
I found Mrs. Clinton to be the most deceptive human being, manipulative political person in a position of power I'd ever met in my entire life. It wasn't so much that she was a liar. It was that she did it and she deceived and manipulated with such ease. This, you know, I, I spoke out against her, and believe me, I, I, it, this was not something I took lightly. I never attacked President Obama personally, and never would. He was, I disagreed with his politics, but he was very genuine and nice to me personally. Mrs. Clinton is a fraud. If the people out there knew the Mrs. Clinton I knew, they would have a far different take. And the fact that she's trying to upend an American election where President Trump was elected, you may not have liked it, but that she's trying to upend it with this nonsense on this what happened tour is a disgrace. It's a disgrace to herself and the American people that picked someone other than her. Robin, I'll add to this. I'll go. I read Donna Brazile's book. I found it fascinating, cover to cover. She says that, no doubt about it, uh, they took the African-American vote for granted. There didn't seem to be any push for any local radio. There was no push to go with the yard signs and the person-to-person -person interaction. It was all about analytics, about a bunch of 30-something years old who thought they knew it all. You know, and I'm, I'm personal friends with Robbie Mook, uh, and I worked with him in South Carolina on the primary on this campaign. Uh, and the first, the entire first section of the book, What Happened, uh, does dedicate to uh, the mistakes of the campaign, her own personal mistakes that she does own up to, uh, where you're exactly right. She, they, ta they, t they got too much into the weeds, into the analytics. Uh, they surpassed the flyover states, uh, the, the middle America votes. We took those for granted. There were a lot of mistakes. Mistakes. Granted, it's a, her, the book is a complete assessment of everything that factored into this, which there was a lot that factored into it. Uh, but, you know, I think that she does take credit for her mistakes. Uh, but in the end, the message was basically that she was embarrassed. She felt like she let her supporters down. Uh, that's why she stepped away from the public eye for quite a, quite a while and is just now making this foray to sell books. But I want to point something out, Brian. Go I ahead. just hope that the point of selling these books is not to try and push Chelsea Clinton to run. Please don't do it. <laughs> I know. I, I, Dan, do you believe that the Democratic Party is turning the page when you see Kirsten Gillibrand stepping up and talking about her husband and when you see others not really running to Hillary's side? She's selling books, got Book of the Year by some club, but I don't think she's winning over people, Dan. I, I, I don't see conversion. I don't see any conversion here. You know, Brian, I've lost elections. I lost a tough one in Maryland. And you know what? You move on. Nobody likes a sore loser. Everybody hates sour grapes. I lost an election that they called the race three days later, and I'll never forget someone calling me and saying, move on. Move on. Don't bother with these lawsuits. Just do it. And that's what we did. Please, I, you know, listen, I know Democrats aren't going to take any advice from me. I'm a conservative Republican. But she is not the hill to die on, the Clintons. Let her go. It is time to throw them overboard here. They are not genuine people. I can make the case to you strongly, having been around them and knowing them far differently than others, maybe including Robin. I'm, I'm not sure that they have been the most destructive force in, Ameri in, in American politics in the last 50 years. Nobody close to them. They have absolutely decimated Americans' faith in government by everything they've done. It's really a shame, and it's time for the Democrats right. to unmoor themselves from the Clintons. And I would say a couple of things. Al Gore, I've never been more in awe of him. He had his heart broken with that election, no doubt about it. He won away. I thought that John McCain right. said I blew it. He kids about it right away. Bob Dole won people over the day after the election. He goes on, he goes on Letterman, and people had a warm feeling for him then. It's the way you lose, not if you lose, that wins people over. And Bush 41 is another great example of that. People thought he was a failed president, not in retrospect. Thanks so much, guys.